In this video, we'll take a look at all the routing possibilities with Video Sync and Live, what the properties device and the external in device can be used for in this regard. We'll discuss how we can use return tracks as external outputs with Siphon. And lastly, we'll look at how we can use return tracks to create feedback loops. With routing, we can determine the path a video follows within Live. Routing video through Live generally follows the same rules as routing audio. There are only a few exceptions, which we'll get back to in a moment. In this live set, a video that includes audio is playing on track 1. The output of this track is set to master. Whatever is routed to the master track will be visible in Video Sync's output window. To demonstrate this, instead of setting the output to the master track, we can set it to sends only. Now we no longer hear the music and can no longer see the video in the output window. However, if we open one of the sends, the audio and video reappear. This is because the output of the receiving return track is still set to master. A track that has its output set to sends only will not route the audio to its parent track if that track happens to be inside a group. The same applies to video. Similarly, if we have the output of a track in a group set to master, the video will not pass through its parent group track either. We can also route the output of a track into another audio track anywhere else in our live set. All we have to do is set the monitor to in on the receiving track so that it will actually receive video from any number of tracks that we route to this track. There are a few other options in the input and output menus of tracks that VideoSync does not support. For example, external inputs strictly apply to audio interfaces. The same goes for external outputs, except that if we select one, the video is instead routed straight to the master track. Video and audio effects can peacefully live next to each other within the same track or chain. If, however, we would prefer the audio and video of a track not to follow the same routing, we will need the properties device to set that up. The device offers a number of parameters that aren't immediately available in Live's interface. It's also a bit different from regular effects, as only one instance can exist on a track or in a chain. When there are two or more properties devices on one track, only the leftmost device will be used. The other devices will display a warning. First of all, we can either mute the audio or video of this track. We can unlink opacity from the volume fader, since this is enabled by default. Follow routings is also enabled by default. If we disable follow routings, the video output of the track will always go straight to the master track, regardless of what the audio output of this track is set to. Since we are on an audio track, we have a few more settings that are specific to audio tracks at the bottom of the device. Here we can choose how video clips should be scaled, for example to scale the video to fit entirely within the current draw size, or to display the video in its original resolution. Lastly, there is the video delay, which is basically the same as the normal track delay for audio in Live's interface, except that this strictly applies to the video content of this track. The external in device allows us to receive video from external sources on a MIDI track. The default mode, track, allows us to receive video from any desired track in our live set. This is very similar to just using an audio track with the monitor set to in, as mentioned before, but the difference here is that we can easily create MIDI clips to add automation in the session view. The second mode, Siphon, allows us to receive video frames from any other application that supports Siphon outputs. The third mode, Device, allows us to receive frames from various hardware devices, such as webcams or various capture cards. While the external in-device handles Siphon inputs, Siphon outputs work a bit different. 
To be able to send video frames from Video Sync to other applications, we first have to enable the desired siphon outputs in Video Sync's preferences window. We have the option to output whatever is sent to the master track over siphon, or we can output whatever is routed to return tracks separately. This will enable us to send out multiple video streams at the same time to one or more different applications. In this live set, we have two different videos on two separate tracks again. Both tracks are set to sends only, and both track 1 and 2 are routed to return A and B, respectively. When we then go into an application like OBS, which can receive Siphon, we can create a desired amount of Siphon inputs, and then either select the master output of Video Sync, which shows both videos blended together, because both return tracks are routed to the master track in live, or we can select separate return tracks. We can then position each siphon source in our composition in OBS. Instead of using return tracks as buses or as external outputs, we can also use them creatively, for example to create feedback loops, the same way we can with audio. Note that for track 1 and return A, the outputs are set to sends only, while for return B, the output is set to the master track. Let's open send B on return track A. When we then send the video from return B back into return A, we'll see the line starts to leave a trail as it moves around. Things become especially interesting when we create some differences between return A and return B. So let's add a transform device to return B, scale down the video, and rotate it a bit. If we then choose a wrap mode, like mirror, and slowly transition towards it, we'll get all kinds of interesting shapes. In conclusion, using return tracks to create feedback loops can often lead to compelling surprises.